Hey, honey, can you get one of the kids to show me how this Twitter thing works? Honey, I need to get on Instagram. Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. What a day. No, I don't have breaking news. Yet. Who knows? <laughs> Yet. Day's not over. <laughs> the way it's going. Just got a very interesting phone call in the break. Stay tuned, folks. World domination continues. So, the Prairie Mobile text line is open, 306-840-8777. Write us at any time. we got lots of time left. 306-840-8777. I, um... The thing is full. Can you see that? It's full. Everything's growing. Yeah. Yeah, these are good days around here at the Rod Peterson Show, and I appreciate um, our sponsors. Actually, one of their top ones checked in yesterday, and he said, how are things going? And I said, things are going great, guns, and no small thanks to you and guys like you. So thank you. But I want to dive into the actual content, and then I'll get to these comments, and maybe I'll check the poll question while we're sitting here. I'll update it. And that is, would you support Canadian federal funding going to American U.S. players? Don't at me because I had to think about it when I initially thought about it. Because you get why. Oh, yeah. I'm pro-Canadian, obviously. It's why I'm living here. Yep. But I'm also a pro-CFL player. More than half the league are Americans. And 73% of you on Twitter are voting yes. I had to think about it, but it was the sports doctor, Dave Patrician, who chimed in from Winnipeg, and he actually convinced me as to why this federal aid should go to American players. 61% of you on Facebook say yes. 73% of you on Twitter say yes. And I just think that's the way that it's got to gotta go. And actually, I told you at the start of the show, I had way more than even six quick six show topics. Mm-hmm. And I do. Great article running right now. It's the top article at rodpeterson.com. Quoting Larry Smith, the former CFL commissioner, who was the commissioner during... He oversaw and led the U.S. expansion. He was the commissioner of the CFL from 92 to 97. Yep. Now he's a Canadian senator. I've had a lot of dealings with Larry over the years. And it's just a fascinating interview. I didn't write it. Dan Ralph of the Canadian Press did. But the first sentence of it was that Larry Smith is no stranger to crisis management as it relates to the CFL. And he just examined from afar, like we all are kind of doing now, how the CFL is handling the crisis that is COVID-19. Larry's also now a politician. He was also a first-round pick of the Montreal Alouettes in the 1970s, went on to win Grey Cups there, um, was an MP out of uh, the Montreal area, now a senator, CFL commissioner, he's no dummy, is what I'm trying to tell you. And his son, Brad Smith, was the Canadian bachelor and was on this show. They're just a first-class, very smart family. Larry wasn't willing to say going to Ottawa for money was the best course of action. But he also said, cut Randy Ambrosi some slack. A lot of what he's doing, which I think people need to realize, Randy is just... Doing what he's told by the owners. It's not the other way around. Randy Ambrosi does not tell the owners how things are going to work in the CFL. The owners tell Randy Ambrosi how things are going to work. Is that not a very important distinction? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's it's a big deal where the message is coming from. Um, the owners have the interest of the collective of the league, and and, and Randy's got to take everybody's you know needs, interests, wants, desires, and you know take all that information and then make some decisions. But you're right; they're the ones that have the interest. They're driving those those discussions, those decisions for sure. I don't think that should change how you look at the federal funding story. I knew this all along. It's not that Larry Smith saying this inform me of anything i knew this i still support the cfl getting it uh that's not to say oh these private owners shouldn't be getting money from ottawa yeah he goes deep into the story of of that so go read it at rodpeterson.com um from our viewers now brady in saskatoon writes in prairie mobile text line he says i support american cfl players getting canadian federal aid only if canadian players are also getting it well you would reasonably assume that they would correct uh, yeah, if they're getting the if they're getting the funding and they're eligible for sure. 
all players will get it. Because I've got a couple of friends who are overseas in New Zealand, and I even asked them, did you apply for the Canadian funding? Because, I mean, you're Canadian citizens, but they're over there working, and it's wherever you filed your income tax with, right? So everybody, some American players will be eligible, some won't. Some will you know, have off-season jobs in the, in the United States, and they're spending their money there and living there, and they'll be eligible for some funding that's coming from the U.S. government. But, yeah, if they're making their money here, spending their money here, filing their income tax in Canada... They're eligible, even if they're living in the States. Uh, Jeff, the Stamps fan, writes in and says, if we directly give U.S. players aid, where does that end? What other non-Canadians living here should get the same? It's a slippery slope, people. For sure. I'm not arguing that. And it all kind of depends on which side of the football you're on. I am pro CFL. I am pro CFL player, coach, staff member, owner. I understand that not everybody is. I said yesterday, these other Canadian sports leagues are watching this situation very closely. Read between the lines on that. Because you know if the CFL gets gets the dough, they're going to be lined up right behind them. Yep. And you don't think Justin Trudeau doesn't know that? Oh, and yeah. that's why we're all just sitting. Or, okay, I'll speak for me. That's why I'm just sitting back watching. I've got some people, stakeholders, if you will, that are texting me saying, you need to look into this. You need to do this. I said, really? No, I don't. Mind your own business. Yeah. We talked about this in the morning meeting. I don't think you understand what my new role is in the world. It's sitting back, having coffee every morning at 10 a.m. Mountain and talking about this stuff. I'm not an investigative reporter. Leave that to the other guys. They don't want me doing it anyways. And I damn sure know the CFL doesn't want me poking my nose into it. They never did. Uh, by the way, Brady says his uh, KBO team is the 2-0 Giants. Giants. The Giants. Put him on the board. You got to get Brady the Giants. Uh, Connor from Yorkton. This is the dream. This is how it's supposed to work. Connor's watching the SJHL simulation the other night on Twitch. He sees an ad for this show. Tunes in Monday morning. Now he's hooked. We are the heroine of daytime TV. Mm, yeah. Give a little for free, and then you're hooked. Yeah. Um, Connor says, hey, Rod, who do you think is the best NHL team? Well, you're a little late to the party on that. To Connor. It's the Edmonton Oilers. In, you mean currently or all time? All time, it's also the Edmonton Oilers. <laughs> my Canadian team, Connor, is the uh, Edmonton Oilers. My American team is the Vegas Golden Knights. Let's go around the room for the newbies. Darren, yours is the Leafs. The Leafs. Yep. And we can't put it. Can we put and a mark on him yet? My American team is the a, Sharks. Yeah, his American team is the Sharks. We cannot yet put a camera on producer Clark. But he's the Leafs too. Monday. But he's the Leafs too. Metal Shingle Guy writes in on the Prairie Mobile text line. And he says, if you are running out of programs to binge watch Rod, the deuce on HBO is kind of raw. Well, you know, I'm going to have to rejig my uh, cable package because I got rid of HBO to get WWE to watch WrestleMania, and I haven't switched back. I don't have HBO. I should get HBO. My cable package, my bill is like $230 as it is. Yeah. A month. But, not complaining, Access, longtime sponsor and supporter of mine. Jim from Bigger writes in, and I'm not sure how to go about reading this tweet to you, but he says, I will go for the whiz. <laughs> Did you hear Jordan start laughing <laughs> hey, over there? And he's laughing. Um, do you want it? This is the verbatim. Okay. Can you read it? Here, take the phone. Just so, I, just so you know I'm not making it up. <laughs> Pull that mic. Jim from Bigger. I will go for the whiz. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to wipe the seat, Jim. Oh, too funny. I'll go for the whiz. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Who names your team the whiz? Is that like cheese whiz? Short for wizard. <clears throat> Jim Wagner writes in. He says, I'm still taking the whiz. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you must have had a lot to drink. That's a good one. <laughs> Uh, Jim says, tell Jordan the whiz will be okay. They just take a bit to get started. Oh, we are number one. I'm not go, old enough to have that problem yet. Go whiz. <laughs> they, they have a fan club now, the whiz. Um, from Little Timmy. Little Timmy texting us. Little Timmy. He says, Rod, you got to try Kim's Convenience. I didn't think it would be good, but we loved it. Okay. What's Kim's convenience? You don't, you're not going to like it. 
I'll what is it? It's, uh, it's corner gas for urban uh, Toronto, and it's a Korean family who owns a convenience store in downtown Toronto or somewhere in Toronto. I think it's hilarious. I love it. What I, are you I, saying? I don't like Koreans? Uh, I've just extolled my love for the Korean no, baseball league you know what? for the last three days. You might, you might like Go it. Go with. <laughs> you might like it because it's not what you grew up in. You know, it's, it's very similar to Corner Gas. It's the Toronto City version of Corner Gas. It's ah, exactly what it it's is. It's a ripoff. They own the Kinesi. But it's hilarious. The, the Korean dad who owns the store, oh, he's really funny. Um, I don't like Corner Gas. No. So you might like this because you didn't live that, but it's the same feel of the show. And it's odd because Brent Butt grew up in small town Saskatchewan. Yeah. Like I did, like you did. Clark's a city boy. Yeah. Uh, Director Jordan is a rural kid like us. He counts himself as that, doesn't he? I think so. He's from a small town anyways. Yeah. I stopped paying attention for a second. And I just, I don't, I don't find Corner Gas funny. Never have. I know that doesn't, maybe that's anti-Sask. I don't know. But the ranch, I can't get enough of the ranch. I can't get it enough. Those guys talk like all my family and friends. Like, give me a question where the, uh, where the answer would say would be yes. Give me a question. Um, are you going to have lunch today? Yeah, are you going to have lunch today? Does Dolly Parton sleep on her back? <laughs> <laughs> like, come on! Yeah. So what's more Saskatchewan than that? I know. We, we, can't, we can't answer a question, which is yes or no. <laughs> no, <laughs> right. Like, we can't. Exactly. Yeah. Um, we have to break and come back uh, with overtime. I am because we lost five minutes of the show. I'm completely out of my cage here for how we are for time. We're right on. Clark says there are three popular drugs in the world: crystal meth, heroin, and the RP show. Four, golf. <laughs> Overtime coming up next. We'll be talking about the rock star of the day. I think I, we got an idea who that'll be. Um, more of your fun uh, text messages. Check the poll results and all that. It's the Rod Peterson Show Facebook Live, Game Plus TV Network, and listen live at rodpeterson.com. Building a deeper connection with our fans by putting them in the show. It's a new era of sports talk. The Rod Peterson Show airs from 10 to noon, Monday to Friday on Facebook Live. Join the conversation today and tune in. Online, on your phone, at home, at work. Follow us on Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter. And subscribe on YouTube for all the content you want to watch. Don't wait. Do it right now.